Welcome to Coffee, Eggs and Inspiration. It's a weekly show that goes out over YouTube and over all of the major platforms as a podcast. And each week I get to sit with an inspiring person and listen to them tell their story and share it with you. This week is no different. I'm joined by Maya Bruni who's a British athlete. I'll give her a little bit of an introduction so uh, you know the, uh, the talent that you're listening to and, and watching here. Maya's a British athlete. She's also a graphic design uh, graduate now. Yes, uh, congratulations this year. Um, before that, when she was at the Brit School where she did interactive and creative design, uh, qualified personal trainer, uh, and the athletics trophies are just mounting up. There's a pile to get through here, so bear with me. European Junior 200 meter champion in 2017. Uh, also 2017 4x100 meter bronze medalist, 4x400 bronze medalist, British Senior Indoor 200 meter bronze medalist, uh, British University Colleges Sports, that's the Bucks uh, athletic competition, 200 meter champ in 2017. Uh, and uh, also in the same year, the 4x100 gold medalist in Bucks. And then in 2018, last year, Bucks 400 metre gold medalist and 4x100 gold medalist. Phew! <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite a collection that you've racked up there, Maya. Uh, welcome and thank you very much for spending time thank with me this morning. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start by taking taking it all back. You grew up in South London, right? Yes, I grew up in Croydon, um, South London, uh, which is obviously where I went to the Brit School, which is a local school there. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how much you know about Croydon, but obviously it's not um, the best area. I mean, it's coming up, which is great. Um, we have the best music. I'm going to be a bit biased here, but <laughs> we have many artists that come from Croydon and they come out and they do great things for uh, UK music industry. Who's your favourite? Um, well, at the moment we've got Crepton Coning, which are doing pretty well. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> of course. Um, but, I mean, from the Brit School especially, we have loads of people that come out there. And, yeah. um, especially one of my friends, Deo Bello, he's, he's up and rising, which is cool. And, and Joe Artsky. So I have loads of friends that are doing These music. were contemporaries you went through yeah, school. They went and they and yeah. they're doing great at the moment, they're touring. So I think it's nice to have be surrounded by friends that are also doing great things in their in their, you know, industries, which is cool. <laughs> well, I know a bit about the Brit School. I'm uh, one of the friends of the school and it's an incredible institution what Stuart and the, his team's done there is uh, yeah. amazing it's just so full of <laughs> energy do you remember when we met actually it was at a Brit school function it was right? it was at the alumni meet um, yeah. me and my sister attended and we were a little bit uh, late but we managed to see some really good talks um, especially by yourself uh, it was just great to see people there interacting with us because I think that's great especially once you leave Brit sometimes you feel a little bit like where am I you're in yeah. kind of a lost space and you yeah. miss that um, structure almost. right so it was really cool to get back see some old teachers some old friends and yeah. uh, get some new contacts it's a, it's a real uh, institution isn't it you can feel it when you're there it's a real yeah. it feels like a family it almost is. it's it, a high energy of, really strong community and yeah. I mean, that's thanks to Stuart really um, yeah brilliant guy I mean he really gets the ethos of believing in your dreams pushing no limits I mean I think I wouldn't be in the same place if it wasn't for his mindset as well there you go Stuart Warden big shout out <laughs> from the Brit School and uh, yeah I, re I, re I remember us talking and you commented I think on my trainers yes. so that got my attention <laughs> I and think, yeah. you were wearing this puma top, and I commented on your, yeah, your top because yeah. it was a rather un <laughs> unusual, uh, unusual thing, and that took us into a conversation about your routine and what you were doing. Yeah, you were there as a design person, yeah. but actually an athlete. Yeah, I mean, I'm a really, I'm a trainer geek, so I, <laughs> I, I noticed those straight away. I mean, I think you had Jordans on, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, so I have a little collection myself. See, I'm sponsored by Puma now, so Puma only. <laughs> for the Are you, well, yeah, I, yeah it's exactly. Hard, yeah. To, hard to see those, <laughs> but uh, very nice pair of Pumas under the table, I can see. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in terms of my routine, as I, as I mentioned to you, it's I mean, at the moment we're off season, so it's October right now, so it's yeah. just nice. Just one break. month off season. Just one month, four so weeks. So eleven months on season. <laughs> yeah, um, and even even now I'm still ticking over, so I will still go to the gym um, once, twice a week, just to keep things going. I don't want to yeah. go into winter training, which is in November, completely 
um, you know, just full of donuts. <laughs> it just <laughs> would be a bad idea. <laughs> so um, in terms of winter training routine, so now I've graduated, it's going to be full-time pro-athlete scheme, which means it's going to be six days a week, uh, twice a week, so that will be like really early morning. So gym would be maybe at 7, 8 a.m. Yeah. And the reason why is that gives you the midday to recover, and then you'll go to the track in the evening right. around 6, 7, and you'll do your track session, which can take anywhere between two, three hours, depending on what that is. So tw twice a day, morning, uh, evening, evening, six days a week. Yeah, yeah. That so. is busy. And yeah. I remember when we spoke, you were doing that as well as university, as university right? university, yeah. So, so take us back and talk <laughs> us through that routine, because that, that, yeah, that blew me away. I mean, I would say, first of all, a lot of student athletes have to go through that, and it's something I underestimated, because I really just thought, oh, I'm at the University of East London, it's amazing for sport, amazing for design. For me, it was the best uni that could balance both at a good, at a good level, and that's why I chose that uni. Also, their, their sports scholarship scheme is amazing, they really support you, they push back deadlines, so they did make things a lot easier than Brilliant. what some universities do. Um, so thanks UEL <laughs> for that. Um, yeah, and so in terms of whilst I was there, it was a case of getting there early. The gym, they had a, a sports scholarship gym there. And so I would get there early. I'd be training there either 8 to 9 a.m. Or the days that, because it was in East London, so I would have to wake up at 6 when I was, this is when I wasn't driving. So it was the case of getting the training. From Croydon. From Croydon. All the way up to East London. It's close to City Airport, yeah, isn't it? Just that across was, the... Yeah, tram, train, train, tube, ch DLR. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, every morning for a good uh, year, yeah, before I started to just drive it, it was a lot easier, even though there's black wall tunnel traffic. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you find time to study? Because, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's so a busy be, course. It would be during lunch times, it would be late evenings, um, it would be at the track sometimes, I'd bring my revision notes, like, you know, and just read them in the change wow. rooms in between reps, yeah, it was just really just making it work and I think if you want it bad enough you can um, it, I mean I had to be organized I had to sacrifice it she I went I didn't go freshers I don't know what freshers is <laughs> I didn't enjoy this is the part yeah. of the welcome party this for is the welcome new students, yeah, yeah I did not attend that <laughs> um, did you attend anything did you have a social life I, outside this I mean, <laughs> Did, obviously, I had um, times where I could meet up with friends. You know, we would we have every Sunday off, which is great because it's six days a week. But you know, the day you do have off, you just want to be at home on the sofa right. and watch Netflix. So, yeah. you know, just <laughs> completely do nothing. I think going out at this point is just all so tiring. Yeah, no <laughs> so, doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Good opportunity for binge watching. What's your favourite on Netflix at oh the moment? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I've just finished Power. Yeah. Um, which I love, uh, and also Top Boy. Which top I, Boy. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. I think they need a Top Girl, though. <laughs> well, yeah. here's an idea. Exactly. Perhaps that's a future project for you. <laughs> okay, so the routine, you're coming into the very heavy season, of course, uh, eyes uh, on the Olympics yes, next year. Yeah, we'll come yeah. to that in a moment. But for, for, before, we get, before we get there, I think one of the really interesting things about uh, what you do, Maya, is you've, you've got this mix of design, mm -hmm graphic design and athletics and I wonder if there's any crossover between those two. Definitely. I think graphic design and athletics, they just work hand in hand for me anyway. Um, sports design is the industry I'm trying to tap into, especially after I've finished with my athletics career. I think it's the easiest thing for me to move towards. Um, with Puma at the moment, it's really great. I get to work alongside some of their shoots, whether that's with us track athletes or footballers, and it's something that I do want to push more to get into. Um, definitely for the experience, but also just as an athlete, you have a different perspective, and I think you yeah. know how angles needs to be shot in terms of filmmaking, and also, gadget-wise as well, in training, as I was explaining, um, we don't have many things that can tell us our meets per second. Right. Um, at the moment, there is there are some cool apps now that actually can do that through film. But it would be cool to kind of look at your watch, know know what speed you just did that repetition right. in. Um, so there are ways that the boundaries can be pushed and, and to help athletes run quicker, jump higher. Yeah. <laughs> so um, 
it's something that we're always pushing towards and obviously big brands are always pushing towards it in terms of clothing yeah uh, which is another thing that i really enjoy uh, so there are so many things I think, so lots of yeah. design options uh, yeah, yeah, yeah alongside athletics and and after you, you mentioned that you know sometimes you're on set and you 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 help out in yeah, a way with yeah. with some of the um organization of, of shoots and things like that tell me more about yeah. that i mean well it first started off uh, i was on a shoot actually in, early on, on in 2017 so yeah, around 2017 I was on a shoot and this was my first sign so they kind of wanted to do a Welcome to Puma sort of photo shoot and whilst I was there they wanted me to do things that I thought were quite girly and, and it didn't really reflect me and my personality um, so I thought well I, I let them know, you know. What, 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 what like? What, what is girly? Um, well it was just things like um, not making me look sporty. It was kind of like, oh, um, walk out. They wanted me to do like a shopping experience. That was kind of the theme of their shoot. So we had to kind of pretend we were looking at these shoes, obviously, uh, and we were shopping, we were buying them. And I just thought it's it's kind of unrelated to what I do and why I'm here. Um, and I do athletics for many reasons. Um, one, obviously, first and foremost, to inspire my community. Um, coming from Croydon, I think it's so important to make sure that people, especially girls, can see that there's a way out and there's something way more productive to be doing. Um, so I kind of wanted to do it in my area, <laughs> for, right. for starters, not in yeah. central London, which, to be honest, until I got signed, I wasn't really shopping <laughs> on, <laughs> you know, Regent Street. That wasn't what I was doing back then. <laughs> right. So I just, I thought, yeah, it would be cool just to go back to where I am and where I still live, really. Um, to do a shoot there, so. So where did you do uh, do the shoot? And um, well, we did bring it back <laughs> to Crystal Palace, which yeah. is where I first started training. That was my first ever track right. in Crystal Palace, South London. Um, so we did a shoot there. And, and it wasn't a shopping experience. I'm it guessing. wasn't it was a shopping experience. What, it was what uh, did you end up doing? track related. So it was just really cool uh, track shots, running shots, but also in casual wear as well, which I kind of like. So right. we kind of mixed the two up. Um, and then I helped edit that as well, which was Amazing. great. I really enjoyed being part of it. And I just felt like I really owned it, which was. Yeah, it sounds like you did own it. You <laughs> yeah. changed the location, you changed the concept, <laughs> and you did the editing. So. <laughs> I think, um, well, I'm, I'm really fortunate that also as a brand, Puma is super cool in terms of they want to work with you, they want you to be happy, they want you to enjoy being with them as a brand and yeah. they really want it to work. So they once I told them that this is actually the vision I have, they were like, okay, cool. <laughs> they, Amazing. Yeah, they yeah. weren't too fussed um, and I think actually they, they really like the outcome of it. Brilliant. Um, tell me more about inspiring your community. I'm yeah. interested to understand a little bit more about how you think about that and what you're yeah. doing. So at the moment, um, I mean, knife crime in London is, is soaring. Um, it's something that obviously a lot of people are working to lower um, the rates of that. Um, but I think a lot of it is due to the fact that kids, especially after school or if they don't go to school or depending on whatever their home situations are, they kind of go to the street to find that uh, care that they don't have maybe at home or at school etc right. um, and I just think it's becoming a bit of an issue um, that they don't have things to do or they don't feel like there's a way out of that uh, mindset or that lifestyle um, so I just think me having the opportunity that I have to show especially girls that yeah you can do other things you can actually go to a track it's like some uh, there's Croydon Athletics tracks like two pound fifty to use the track, so right. it's something that you can do. It's it's a lot cheaper than other sports. I mean that's why I first started. Um, I think I could have been really good at tennis, but tennis coaching is a lot more expensive than athletics coaching. Right. So it's one of those sports that is really open to a vast range of backgrounds, yeah. and I think that's why athletics is a great platform to inspire youth and. Hopefully, you know, if I do make it to the Olympics, it will be one of those things that I will be able to go and talk about in schools and just have a bigger platform to say, hey, you can do that too. And if you need help, I have, I've got the connections, you know, I've got Puma, they can help sponsor you. I mean, when I got my first kit drops, they would give me, I mean, hundreds of trainers. I mean, it was a crazy amount. I said, what am I going to do? 
hundreds of trainers. I didn't have room in my house for it. I mean, my mum was getting really stressed out, like, you've got boxes everywhere, like, what are you going to do? Um, so I ended up giving loads of those away to the local athletics track, which was just yeah. such a great thing to do, because they needed the Gives training. other people a, a chance. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, you're an amazing thinking. inspiration to me, and I'm sure to, to many others, and, and will be for some time. You mentioned your parents. Let's yes, pause yeah. there, because they've played a big role in, have, in your career yeah. so far. Tell me about that. Um, so, I mean, from a young age, I was a bit of a handful. <laughs> I always had loads of energy. Um, so I think my father, and especially my father, he noticed that I've got this this element of just really running really quickly everywhere, everywhere I wanted to go. It's almost like I was running before I was walking. It was crazy. <laughs> so they um, signed me up when I was seven years old to a local athletics track, which was Crystal Palace Athletics Track. And I just started training there. And I started off three times a week, so Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings. Um, so already getting in a routine from a young age. That's why I think balancing the routine really became normal as I grew up. Um, and your father's David, yes, uh, still yeah, involved, a technical coach, is yeah, that right? Yeah, he um, definitely is 100% involved. Uh, he will be looking over films of my races, mm. um, helping me with any technical feedback that I might have. Yeah. Um, but also, the relationship I have with both my parents is almost like they're my friends as well, and I can talk yeah. to them about a lot of things. And I think, as an athlete, you are going through other stresses in your life as well. Mm. You know, you're, you're a human being, and it's really important to be able to talk to people um, sure. about that. And yeah, my mom, she's a nutritionist, so she's always been on top of what I eat, um, <laughs> which wasn't always the great. I used to sneak sweets in. I used to, you know, go make sure I went to Sainsbury's in the morning, had my dinner, right. went to Greg's. Like, but then, you know, and then I got serious. Um, I did English schools, which is, I mean, at the time it was on Sky Sports. Yeah. It was a massive event, and um, it was kind of like a glorified sports day, really. Right. I mean, it, it was huge, and uh, I, I won that. I won the 100 and 200 metres there. Brilliant. And I think that's when I just said, like, yeah, like, I can do this quite seriously now. Like, I right. think I should do this seriously. And you've got to put the right sort of fuel into oh, your... Of course. So of what, course. Sort of, what sort of regime are you, are you on from a dietary um, point of view? Well, I... From a nutritional point of view, yeah, I should say. Yeah, from a nutritional <coughs> point of view, um, I eat for performance, so that means... It, it's not about what I like. So um, we have, for example, loads of greens. So it'd be like kale, um, which personally not not my favourite vegetable in the world. But I mean, it's just great, just for refueling. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have proteins as well. So I I do have chicken. I tend to stay away from red meat around competition, just because apparently that's you know it's a bit heavy, yeah. especially for just the events that I do. Right. If I was a marathon runner, then that would be probably would great. Be okay, yeah. But um, we. 200 meter, 400 meter, even 100 meter, we got to stay pretty light on our feet. Right. Um, so in the morning before a race, I normally stick stick to a little bit of porridge, some fruit, blueberries, especially blueberries, yeah. a great great snack to have. Much like today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's and it's always and I've I've learned to stay in that habit off season because yeah. if you're off season and you go completely off the rails, it's like getting back to that diet. Yeah, it's hard to. It's really hard. To re-break the habit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so your mum uh, has has given you lots of nutritional. Yeah. Uh, help Sylvia yes, is her name. Sylvia, yeah. Um, cool. So uh, now eyes on the Olympics. You've graduated from university, so you've only got the athletics to focus on, exactly. I guess, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the lead up to that and uh, what you're experiencing. Olympics, uh, July, August. Yeah. in Japan yes. uh, in 2020 mm -hmm. with selection in June. summer, June. June, yeah. Right. Um, so well, wow. it's going to be really interesting, good season ahead. Um, so November is where I'm going to be starting um, my 400, 200 metre training. So it's going to be the first time I'm going to be doing a longer programme, uh, which I'm really excited to attempt. So you're focusing in just on the 200 and 400? Yes, exactly. No yeah. more relay? Um, well, relay is part of the 4x4, okay. so I will be looking to tap into the 4x4 team. Um, that would be, it would be a great opportunity. Um, right. If I can run the time, they I believe I have a good chance of getting served. Gotcha. So it, it's there's a big opportunity there to be to be taken. Um, so I, I was explaining there's the indoor season which comes between December and March, and this year there's the World Indoors, which is in China. 
um, which is going to be amazing. Uh, it's like whereabouts in China is that? Um, I think Nan Nanjing. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be a really cool experience. I think the reason why I would like to go there is because it's they, you know, simple things like toilet signs, um, what's for breakfast, s simple phrases. I have no idea what they are, what they look like, how to say them. And I wouldn't want my first time being in the Olympics. Um, obviously, everything will be in Japanese there, so it, it, it will be quite hard to understand yeah. and communicate, um, even though most people talk English now. But mm -hmm. it will be great just to have that experience of not... Put yourself into a very foreign yeah, place. Yeah, not knowing exactly what what to do, where I am, yeah. etc. So uh, that is taking place in March with the trials in February. Right. So I'll be working towards that to start off with, um, hopefully make that team in March, yeah. um, then take almost like a little week off. <laughs> after. A little week. Yeah, yeah. a little week, um, which I'll be grateful for. It'll be a nice little transition to the outdoor training, which will start in around late March, April. Um, is it a different tech, indoor versus outdoor, is it a different technique, a different, do, well, you, do, you, do indoor, you get different performance? Indoor <coughs> sprinting, um, we have 60 metres instead of 100 metres, for starters, and also the 200 and 400 is based on a track that has banks, so you're almost running... It's like a velodrome. Like a velodrome. It's like running on a velodrome, less obviously exaggerated banks, yeah. um, but exactly. <clears throat> so it's a completely different technique. Yeah. Um, people tend to run a little bit slower indoors than they do outdoors. Oh, really? Yeah, um, just due to the fact that you are going up the hills and coming back down, and, and it's a little bit of a different dynamic and terrain as well because it's like all this hitting up and <laughs> coming down. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty exhausting. Is it easier on your ankles, though, because you're, you're on a bank that sort of cambers? This is a, yeah, you have to train for stability. So right. indoors, you're going to be doing a lot of plyometrics, so a lot of box jumps, a lot of uh, stability work. Plyometrics? Um, yeah, plyometrics. What's that? Um, so plyometrics are kind of like... Uh, so they'll set up bo different height of boxes and you'll be jumping in those and you work on just staying still so you'll, you'll be right. just keeping that balance and then to gotcha. make it harder you might do it with an elastic band, you might have your coach throw a medicine ball at you. Um, yeah, so it, it gets pretty intense indoor, wow. yeah, indoor season is pretty intense but it lays the foundation for outdoors. So you come out uh, of the indoors stronger in a way. Exactly, way right. stronger. Um, Interesting. And that's obviously hoping that you haven't been injured. I mean, a lot of athletes do get injured indoors, but it's planned into the program because what we do, we're pushing ourselves, you know, to our capabilities in training all the time. Yeah. And that's how you learn to push your body. That's how your body reaches new levels. Um, so we always plan it in just in case you do pick up a little something. Yeah. Um, that's always going to be planned in. So it shouldn't really affect how training goes too much. What do you do? Uh, um, what do you do to, I guess, mitigate or minimise the uh, the injury risk? Um, well, a lot of it's recovery. So mm -hmm. we have massages, which right. sounds great, but sounds brilliant. Sounds great, but they're sports <laughs> massages, so okay, <laughs> yeah. not so great. <laughs> not so great. Um, pretty painful sometimes, <laughs> especially if you haven't been doing your stretches, <laughs> which tends to be me. But um, yeah, we get sports massages. So sometimes some athletes might get that every day. Mm -hmm. Some athletes get it three times a week. It just depends on your body. Everyone's different and um, everyone needs different things. We have Epsom salt baths, um, maybe even ice baths. There's uh, something really cool now called cryotherapy, which loads of athletes do. Yeah, so, like, basically, that sounds uncomfortable. Yeah, stepping into a fridge, it's like minus <laughs> gonna degrees. degrees. Um, yeah, and basically that's just meant to stimulate uh, the blood and just okay. Get your so it takes the blood to the outer parts. Basically, of the body. yeah, 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 okay. and and it gets the blood to the muscles a lot quicker. That's the science behind it. Sounds really uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, um, so like an ice bath. <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah. Gosh. Uh, amazing. Well, um, it sounds it sounds like it's going to be uh, intense. We're all um, going to be uh, rooting rooting for you as you as you lead up to China and hopefully Japan as well. There may be some people from uh, your community who are watching this or listening to yeah. it as a podcast. What advice would you give? You're a, obviously a very successful woman. <laughs> I think it's it's to relax, um, which can be the hardest thing. Um, obviously, it's 2020; it's a big year, and you are there's a lot of pressure from everyone around me as well. Um, but I put a lot of pressure on myself to get there, to be there. But in actual fact, sometimes just relaxing 
you run a lot quicker, you, your mind is a lot more free, mm -hmm. and you're able to just function a lot better. And I think that's what's so important, is just to remember that even though you've got these massive goals, to not really tr force them at the same time, which sounds a bit strange, but sometimes letting them come to you, which is a bit of a weird thing to think of. <laughs> but um, yeah. I, I find that I train better when actually I go to training without any thought of anything. I right. just go to training almost like a release. Like it's like yeah. my space to just do what I enjoy yeah. and have fun with it. And it's just a different, Way instead of going there, like I gotta make the team, and you know, and it's yeah. just it then becomes do it for the enjoyment, yeah, it then becomes a job. And I think yeah. that's not what that's not why I do athletics. I, I love what I do, and I think running is just a great opportunity yeah. to get into loads of other things. Yeah. So for me, it's just about having fun with it. So. Well, that's great advice, uh, also. But you know, not everyone's gonna be a, an Olympic standard yeah. athlete if you're a young man or woman. Uh, growing up in in South London or, or elsewhere, yeah, yeah. what advice would you have for them for, for the non athletes? I mean, for the non, I mean, I I feel like it's the same. Whatever you do, mm -hmm. I think you need to enjoy it. That's how you're going to do the best at it. Um, I think growing up, I remember um, a lot of my friends used to talk about, oh, I'm going to go to university and I'm going to study law because you know a lawyer gets. X amount of month salary a year, and that's what I want to do. But it's like, well, do you actually enjoy it? Because if you live 40 years, you know, doing that job, are you actually going to say to yourself, once you retire, yeah, I really enjoy the last 40 years of my life? Or are you going to say, well, that, yeah. that was a massive waste of time? Yeah. Um, so I think success comes to you when you do something you love, because that's when you're going to have the most passion for it, and you're actually going to find that you push it to a different level because you are almost obsessed with it. It's something that you do naturally. It's almost like a habit. Um, and and it's like it's like with musicians when you think about it. Um, yeah. It's crazy. They just they the words just come off the page for them and they yeah. end up writing these beautiful songs and you're thinking, well how do they do well they love what they do. They don't yeah. force themselves <laughs> to sit there and write these songs. So um, yeah, no matter what you do, you've got to enjoy it. Well, that is absolutely brilliant <laughs> and inspirational <laughs> advice. Um, best of luck for China. Thank you Best so of much. luck for the Olympics. <laughs> and uh, you're a real inspiration. Thanks oh. for spending time with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>